Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to show you how to detect overconsumption problems using Confluent Control Center. Now, I'm using the Control Center demo on GitHub. That's at Confluent Inc. slash CP demo. We've got a whole separate video showing you how to get that thing set up. Uh, there's Docker containers, there's scripts to get you started, all that stuff. Make sure you watch that video, follow along with the steps, get the demo environment set up if you haven't yet already. That will enable you to follow along with everything I'm doing in this video. So our job here is to identify consumers that are over consuming some messages. Now this may happen intentionally. Like if you deployed an application with a bug in it and it consumed and processed a whole bunch of Kafka messages, but it did it incorrectly. Now, obviously this wouldn't happen to you. You wouldn't deploy buggy code, but maybe a friend or you read about it on the internet, somebody doing this. After they find and fix that bug and redeploy the consumer, the new deployment might decide to reprocess previous messages, except correctly this time. This would look like overconsumption to Control Center. Overconsumption may also happen unintentionally, like if an application crashes before committing the offset of the processed messages. Then when it comes back up, it'll get an old offset and reprocess some messages twice. In our case, we'll use Kafka's Consumer Offset Reset tool. This will set the consumer group to an earlier message offset, thereby forcing the consumer group to reconsume messages it had previously consumed, thus simulating an overconsumption. Here we are in Control Center in the Streams Monitoring view. Let's scroll down and look at a consumer group called App. That's our demo consumer group here that we're going to be working with. We can drill down a little bit even further and look at each consumer within this consumer group. Now the group has two consumers, consumer app one and consumer app two. They're consuming from a topic called wikipedia.parsed, which has two partitions famously numbered zero and one. Now that all looks fine, so let's make it not fine. Let's cause a problem. Over in the terminal, I'll stop the consumer group gracefully. We do this because we want to run the offset reset tool and that requires the consumers to be stopped. So we have to stop them first. Before we restart the consumer though, let's go back to Control Center and see what we see with the consumers down. Uh, it looks like 241 messages were produced during this time period, uh, the time period uh, after we stopped the consumers, and only 44 were consumed before we actually stop them. Notice this red bar here. The expected consumption is 241 messages. Why is that expected? Well, because that's how many messages were produced in this one minute time window. But like I said, only 44 of them were consumed by the consumer group. The remaining 197 messages in this case were produced, but the consumer group was stopped before it had a chance to process them, hence the red bar. If we scroll down to see the individual consumers within the group, we see they reflect the same thing. All right, sanity check complete. Let's go back to the terminal. The consumer has been stopped for some time. The producers were still writing to the topic Wikipedia parsed, so it has accumulated a lot of data. We want to restart the consumer group, but at an earlier offset. So we rewind the offsets by 200 messages backwards per consumer. Uh, if you look at the command line here, that's the dash dash shift by minus 200 flag in the command. Well, cool. Now we're ready to start the consumer group back up. That's both consumers in the group, consumer app one and consumer app two. When these consumers start back up, they'll need to know where to start consuming. To do this, they'll pull the brokers. This is just some basic Kafka stuff here. The brokers will look up the consumer offsets for this consumer group, which have now been reset to an earlier offset value, thanks to our little bit of command line genius, and begin returning records at that earlier offset. Now, back at the stream monitoring view in Control Center, our, our good old normal default view in Control Center, we see that during the time period the consumer group was not running, no produced messages are shown as delivered. That's because the consumer was down. Excellent. Then we suddenly see that previously consumed messages were consumed again. Did you notice that jump in the graph there? Now first, but where did that gap go that we saw just a minute ago? You noticed all the empty bars just got filled in. Each of those bars represents messages processed during a one minute interval, during the one minute interval that the bar corresponds with. Each bar is a time window. Uh, that is, each bar is a time window relative to the produce timestamp. 
When the consumers started back up, they processed not just the old messages again, but also all of the messages that were produced while the consumer group was stopped, everything that was piled up there in the queue, in the topic. Because these graphs are relative to the produce timestamp, those time periods filled in when the consumer group was restarted and it caught up with all those written messages according to their produce time in the Wikipedia parsed topic. All right, but what about those red bars? Messages that were processed by the consumer group the first time before we stopped the group were reprocessed after we started it. They were processed twice. Because of that double processing, the consumed messages exceeded the expected consumption counts for those time periods. So those bars are now red. And they were consumed twice because we rewound the offset. We explicitly asked for them to be consumed twice. Third, notice the latency. Now that jumped up from about 10 milliseconds to suddenly several thousand milliseconds. Again, this latency calculation is relative to the produce timestamp. And when the consumers got around to consuming them, many seconds had gone by since the messages were produced. This is because the consumer was simply switched off for a while. So yeah, latency was actually pretty bad then. That's, that's good that we know that. From the application developer perspective, a developer might not have built-in logic using the consumer API to know that messages are being processed twice. Uh, a naive consumer might just see, hey, here's a message, it's being delivered, let me do something with it. Now, maybe it's a clever consumer and it makes message processing idempotent, so this duplicate delivery doesn't matter, but there's still at least an impact to the application to spend the cycles doing the work twice. And if you're using the consume and produce API in this way, where duplicate delivery is a possibility, Control Center makes it pretty easy to see when this is happening by highlighting the periods of overconsumed messages. And of course, you can set alerts on that too. Now, seeing this happen in Control Center might lead you to look into what's going on at the application level to see if you can diagnose the problem. Maybe there's a bug, maybe there's something worth investigating that Control Center has surfaced for you. Now, just for fun, let's check the math on how many messages were overconsumed. Uh, we'll look at the three red bars. In the first one, we have 804 minus 797. That's seven. So seven were overconsumed during this time period. In the next bar, we have 883 minus 534. That looks like a difference of 356. In the final red bar or overconsumed period, we have 690 minus 290, which is a difference of 400. This 400 corresponds to the offsets we rewound. Remember, we rewound by 200 per consumer. So the overall consumer group was over by 400 since there are two consumers in it. That math works out nicely. So there you go. Overconsumption is a thing that can happen in Kafka clusters. Fixing it is often a matter of changing application code, but the really helpful news is that it's easy to detect the scenario using Confluent Control Center.